the doing of his word in Jesus' holy name. We pray. Amen. 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 Hello, everybody. Welcome to Israel's Church of Living God. I'm Brother Rodney, and Brother Caleb will be reading today. Uh, Sister Audrey, let me get you to come here for a minute. And we'll be doing a lesson today entitled The Law Out of the New Testament. Can you get the lamps here? The lights. Right here. We'll be doing a, a lesson today entitled The Law Out of the New Testament. And um, I think the last time we done this lesson was about uh, three years ago, almost to the day. Um, so we'll be doing today the law out of the New Testament. I know a lot of people um, kind of say that the law is done away with. And, and when it comes to the law, it was only given to you in the New Testament. But I want everybody to know that Jesus himself kept the law. And if Jesus kept the law, that's what we are supposed to be doing, keeping the law. So we're going to show you in this lesson, dealing mainly in the New Testament. I think we only got like maybe two scriptures, three scriptures in the Old Testament, maybe four in the Old Testament. But for the most part, we will be dealing with the New Testament and showing you the law in the New Testament. Let's go now. Let's go to uh, uh, Isaiah, the uh, 8th chapter first. Isaiah, the 8th chapter. Because I don't want nobody to get this mixed up. Uh, we believe in both Testaments. We deal with both Testaments. So we go on, we have Isaiah, the 8th chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 20. Isaiah 8 and 20. When you get it, go ahead and read that. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. To the law and to the testimony. Uh -huh. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, he said to the law and to the testimony. The law being the old book and the testimony being the new book. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. There's no understanding in them. Because, you know, you hear people saying all the time, well, I'm a New Testament Christian. I'm like, well, there's no such animal. There's no such person that's a New Testament Christian. Let's go now. Let's go to Revelation 19 chapter. Revelation 19 chapter. Let's see what um, Jesus gave you. Uh, we're going to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. And we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Revelation 19 and verse 9. Let's see what Jesus gave you. Go ahead and read it, brother. Revelation chapter 9. 19. Chapter 19, excuse me, verse 9. Uh-huh. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Uh-huh. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet. To worship him. Now this is John. He's falling at the feet of his angel right here to worship him. But what did the angel say? Go ahead. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. Uh-huh. I am thy fellow servant. Go ahead. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Uh-huh. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And where do you get prophecy from? You get it out of the Old Testament, which we call the law. Yes, sir. The spirit of Jesus is a test. The, the, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what you got in essence is Jesus teaching you out of the Old Testament. This is how Jesus taught the people out of the Old Testament. Does everybody understand that? Amen. Let's go now. Let's go to, um, let's see what else he said. Let's go to Luke the ninth, uh, 16th chapter. Luke 16. <clears throat> you see, uh, we, a lot of times people get it mixed up. And they act as though the apostles and Jesus brought something new. They didn't bring anything thing new. They just testified of what the prophet said. That's all they did. Luke 16 and 13. Luke 16 and 13. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Luke chapter 16, verse 13. Uh-huh. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Uh-huh. 
Or else he would hold to the one and despise the other. Uh -huh. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard of these things. Now you see what he said. He said, then the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard these things. What is covetous? That's the Ten Commandment right there. Thou shalt not covet. So, Go ahead and read. Then the Pharisees also, who were, who were covetous, heard of these things, and they derided him. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Ye are they which testify yourselves, that justify yourselves before men, uh -huh. before men, but God, but God know of your hearts. See, see, you know, you justify yourself before men, but God know of your heart. You might be telling men, uh, uh, what you might be telling men a certain thing, thing that you doing or that you not doing. But then God knows your heart. He don't try to hard try to arrange to get every man according to his works may be. So although you could be fooling me, you're not fooling God. He said, He said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourself before men, but God know of your heart. Go ahead and read. He know if you're doing right or not. Go ahead and read. But well, that which is highly esteemed among men. Is abomination in the sight of God. Uh huh. The law and the prophets were until John. Go ahead. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached, and every man presses into it. Uh huh. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. You see that? I mean, how can you get around that? He said, it is, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. Is heaven and earth still here? Then the law is still good. I mean, Jesus just breaks it down. He makes it so simple for us to understand this. He makes it simple for us. Read that one more time. 17. Uh-huh. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass uh -huh. than one tittle of the law to fail. Go ahead. Whosoever put him away, his wife, and marrieth another, Commit of adultery. Now, if you put away your wife right now and lay with another woman, are you committing adultery? Yes. Turned around and gave you a law that's written in the commandments to let you know exactly what he is talking about. He said, whosoever put away his wife and marrieth another committeth adultery. Uh huh. And whosoever marrieth her that is put away from her husband uh -huh. committed adultery. Committed adultery. That's one of the commandments. That is one of, one of the commandments. Let's go now. We're going to John, but I don't want to go too fast. We're going to John, the seventh chapter. John 7. We're just going to keep it real simple. Keep it real simple. And we're going to show you that the law is good even in the New Testament. John 7. John 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. John 7 and 1. We're going to touch on a few things here and there to show you that in the New Testament they were still keeping the laws. The same laws that were given in the Old Testament. Go ahead and read it. John 7. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read it. Yes, sir. John 7, verse 1. Uh -huh. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee. For he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Uh -huh. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacle was at hand. Stop right there. You see, he said, and the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Where did they get this from? This, the, uh, the feast of tabernacles. They got it out of Leviticus 11, chapter, uh, 23rd chapter. And when you go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, that's where all the feasts are yes, that God commanded us to do. He didn't command us to keep pure rim, which we know that the so-called Jews keep now, but he never commanded us to do that. The feast days that he commanded us to keep are in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, and this is one of them. In fact, this is the last one, the Feast of Tabernacles. Yes, sir. Now let's see if Jesus kept the Feast of Tabernacles. So a lot of people say they follow after Christ, but then when you look and see what they're doing, you find out they're doing things totally opposite of what Christ was doing. 
and what he was teaching. Skip down to verse uh, 14. Skip down to verse 14. Go ahead and read it. Now about the midst of, of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. He did, went up into the temple and did what? Taught. And taught. Isn't that what we do on the feast days? Yes, sir. We stand up before you and we talk or we teach. Because that's how our master done it and that's how we are supposed to do it. He stood up on the feast day and he taught. Go ahead and read. And the Jews marveled, saying, uh -huh. How know of this man letters having never heard, never learned? Uh -huh. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, uh -huh. but his that sent me. Oh, so it's, the, it's not just Jesus telling you what to do. He got this from the Father. Sir. He got this from the Father. Go ahead and read. 17. Uh-huh. If any man will do his will, uh -huh. he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Go ahead. He that speaketh of himself seeketh seek of his own glory. Uh-huh. But he that seeketh of his glory that sent him, the same is true. Go ahead. And no unrighteousness is in him. Uh-huh. Did not Moses give you the law? Did not Moses, now look, he's telling these Pharisees this. Did not Moses give you the law? Now if he didn't want you to keep the law, then why is he telling the Pharisees, did not Moses give you the law? Teach. If he was going, if he was going to do away with it, because Jesus knew when he was going to die. Did not Moses give you the law? Go ahead and read. And yet none of you keep the law. And yet none of you keep the law. So if he was doing away with it, why would he tell him none of you keep the law? Why would he tell him this? Did not Moses give you the law and none of you keep the law? Go ahead. Why go ye about to kill me? Uh-huh. Now, so Jesus is Jesus telling him that Moses gave you the law. And none of y'all keep it. But if he was doing away with it, why is he telling him about keeping it? Why is he questioning them about this? Let's go to Colossians. Colossians, the second chapter. Colossians, the second chapter. See, scriptures like these are not read to the masses. They're not read to the masses. Therefore, people say, well, you know, I'm a New Testament Christian. Because these type scriptures are not read to the, master, uh, to the masses. We had Colossians, the second chapter, Colossians 2, and we're going to read, because I want you want to show you something real quick, you know, because, you know, we saw Jesus kept the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, look at what Paul is telling these uh, Colossians right here. This is after, this, we're, in the new, we're in the New Testament right now, Colossians. I want you to know that we're in the New Testament, yes, sir. and he's talking to the Gentiles. Yes, sir. Colossians 2. And we're going to pick up in verse 8. What does that say? Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Be le beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy uh -huh. and vain deceit. Uh -huh. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, uh -huh. and not after Christ. Now, he said, beware. He's warning you. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, vain deceit, after the traditions of men. What are the traditions of men? Sunday. That is the traditions of men. Emperor Constantine started that in the fourth century. Easter, that is traditions of men. Does everybody understand? Christmas, that is a tradition of men. Going to heaven, tradition of men. Yes. <laughs> the Bible talks about you going uh, to the grave when you die, not going to heaven. That is tradition of men. But more importantly, let's get to what we really came for. Skip down to verse uh, 16. Verse 16. Go ahead. 16. Uh-huh. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink uh -huh. or in respect of an holy day. Don't let, you know, because Paul is telling these Colossians, look, you want to become a spiritual Jew, these are the things that you have to do. So he said, look, don't let... Don't let not any man judge you in meat and drink or in respect of an holy day. And you honoring a holy day. Now, first thing you will want to know is, what are the holy days? 
That's the first thing you need to ask, because Christmas, you can't find that in the Bible as no holy day. Sunday, you can't find that in the Bible as a holy day. Easter, you cannot find that in the Bible as a holy day. Because when people start, well, Easter is in the Bible, it's in Acts 12 chapter. I said, well, okay, tell me what day is on and how you're supposed to keep it according to the Bible. So now when it comes to respecting the holy days, the first thing you want to know is what are the holy days? So now I'm going to run them down to you. We're not going to read them, I'm going to run them down to you. The Sabbath day, that is a holy day. The Passover, that is a holy day. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, that is a holy day. The Pentecost, or the Feast of Weeks, that is a holy day. The Memorial of the Blowing of the Trumpet, that is a holy day. The Day of Atonement, that is a holy day. The Feast of Tabernacles, or the Ingathering, that is a holy day. Anything outside of that, show it to me. You got to show that to me. I mean, not show it to me in history or nothing like that. I want you to show it to me in the Bible. Because that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with the Bible and the Word of God. Amen. So you got to show it to me in the Bible. Because, you know, I'm tired of brothers keep calling me with all of this garbage. Well, you can't say what's holy days and what's not. Yes, I can. It's written right here in the Bible. <laughs> not only can I say it, I can read it to you. Now you read me your holy days in the Bible. Read them to me. I'm sorry, brother. Read that verse again. Verse 16. Yes, sir. 16. Uh-huh. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink uh -huh. or respect that holy day. Uh-huh. Or the new moon. Uh-huh. Or the Sabbath day. He's saying or the new moon or the Sabbath day. How do you, how do you calculate the uh, feast days? You calculate them according to the new moon. Sure. That's how you calculate them. This don't have nothing to do with no pagan holidays. Nothing. Because people want to say, well, you can't uh, deem what's holy and what's not holy, but the Bible can. Sure. You can't say my, my uh, day that I keep is not holy. Yes, I can, according to the Bible. Let no man therefore judge you in meat and drink or in, or, or in respect of an holy day or in honoring a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. This ain't got nothing to do with no other days that some man that made up. Nothing. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4 chapter. Deuteronomy 4 chapter. Because right here, the, uh, uh, Moses is telling the people about the, uh, com the, the commandments that God had given them. And he called these commandments the covenant. Let's go to Deuteronomy 4 chapter. Deuteronomy 4 chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Deuteronomy 4 and 5. Everybody got it? Amen. Go ahead and read it. What yes, happened? Deuteronomy 4, verse 5. Uh-huh. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, uh -huh. that, ye should, that ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Now, what are statutes? Statutes are laws. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even though the Lord my God commanded me. See, Moses didn't do this himself. God commanded him. Just like God turned around and commanded the people. Tell Moses, go tell the people. Go ahead and read. Verse 6. Uh-huh. Keep therefore and do them. Uh-huh. But this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of oh, the nation. Oh, this is how you understand? This this was going to give you wisdom and understanding by keeping these commandments? Yes, sir. Now, what if you're not keeping the laws and commands of God? Or do you have any wisdom? You don't have no wisdom. Keep therefore and do them. This is your wisdom and understanding the sight of the nations, uh-huh. Which shall hear all these statutes uh -huh. and say, yeah. Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. See, this is a wise and understanding people. How 
why were they wise and understand? Because they understood the commandments and laws of God. Hallelujah. This is what this is how you get your wisdom. And if you are not keeping the laws and commandments of God, I don't care what generation you are in or were in. If you're not keeping the commands and laws and commands of God, you don't have any wisdom. You don't have no wisdom. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. Uh-huh. For what nation is there so great? Uh-huh. Who hath God so nigh unto them? Uh-huh. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him. See, he has not been this close to no other people. Only the children of Israel have God spoken to. Moses, an Israelite, God spoke to face to face. Can you say this about no other people or no other person? Go ahead and read it. Verse 8. Uh-huh. And what nation is there so great that have statutes and judgments uh -huh. so righteous as all this law? Ooh, you see that? The law is righteous. Yes, sir. It is righteous. So if you want to walk in righteousness, then you have to walk in the law. Otherwise, how are you walking in righteousness? Teach. Read that one more time. Somebody didn't hear that. And what nation is there so great? Uh-huh. That have statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law. Uh-huh. Which I set before you this day. Which I set before you this day. But Moses didn't come up with this himself. God is the one who gave it to him. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Moses was God's king over the children of Israel, but the Lord was getting ready to kill him. Why? Because he didn't keep the law of God. What did he do? What, what didn't he do? He did not circumcise his child at the eighth day. And the Lord sought to kill him in the way. Moses don't even know what's going on. The Lord was getting ready to kill him. His wife understood why the Lord was getting ready to kill him. Took a rock and circumcised the child and then threw the foreskin at Moses' feet and said, A bloody father are you because of the circumcision. Although Moses was the Lord's king, he used Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. But God didn't care. You ain't keeping my law. I'm getting ready to kill you. Does everybody understand? If you don't keep the law of God, one day God is going to do something to you. And let's hope that if he does do something to either one of us, that we wake up, you understand, and understand that, you know, God is doing this for us to turn back to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because a lot of times he'll punish you to turn back to him. But a lot of times he just go ahead and kill you. I know that's hard for people to, 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 to swallow, but it's true. Only thing you have to do is read this book. Skip down to verse 12. Skip down to verse 12. Go ahead and read. God is a merciful God. But if you keep on going and keep on sinning against him, he will do something to you. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Skip down to verse uh, 12. Skip down to verse 12. That goes for all of us. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Uh huh. Ye heard the voice of the of the words, but saw no similitude. Uh huh. Only ye heard a voice. Go so ahead. And he declared unto you his covenant. Whose covenant? His covenant. His covenant. This ain't Moses' covenant. This is not the children of Israel's covenant. This is God's covenant. Hallelujah. And he declared unto you his covenant. Go ahead. Which he commanded you to perform. Uh-huh. Even ten commandments. See, he commanded you to perform this. The ten commandments. He commanded you to perform this. Not though, well, you know, maybe I will and, you know, maybe God. No, he commanded you to keep his ten commandments. Read that one more time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back at the top. Uh-huh. Thirteen. Uh-huh. And he declared unto you his covenant. Which he commanded you to perform. Uh-huh. Even ten commandments. Go ahead. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judges. Uh-huh. That ye might do them in the land whether ye go over to possess it. Skip down to verse 44. And you know a lot of people say, well, this Moses' law. 
The Lord is our lawgiver. Teach. <laughs> the Lord is our lawgiver. Now we know that we have to listen to what Moses said, but God is the one who gave it to him. Get that plan, brother. Skip down to verse 44. Go ahead. 44. Uh-huh. And this is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. Uh -uh. See that? See, they go on stuff like this. This is the law that Moses set before the children of Israel. So this is Moses' law. No, God gave it to him. He commanded Moses. He commanded him to give his law to the children of Israel. Go ahead and read. These are the testimonies and the statutes uh -huh. and the judgments which Moses spake unto the children of Israel. Uh huh. After they came forth out of Egypt. Now. So God commanded Moses to give the law to the children of Israel. His commandment, he said, look, this is his covenant. This is his covenant. Let's go now. So now, you can break a covenant on you. What can you do away with God's covenant? I don't care who you are. Sir. What did Jesus say? Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets till heaven and earth and come till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle should in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now wait a minute. If Jesus didn't come, he couldn't do away with the law. How could Paul? Amen. How could Peter? We ain't gonna even talk about the prophets because they would keep the law. But see, the problem is is Paul writing. That's the problem people got with, you know, Paul, it's Paul's right. Paul said, Paul said, who is Paul? He a servant just like we are. He can't do away with no covenant. He can break it, but he can't do away with it. We in Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. Hebrews 8 and 1. I just want y'all to understand how deep this really is. Hebrews 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And I want you to know, too, a just man falls seven times, but he get back up. And that's the most important thing you need to do, is get back up. Because if you don't get back up and start walking in God's laws and commandments, you surely going to perish. Yes, sir. You are going to perish. Hebrews 8 and 1, Hebrews 8 and 1, go ahead and read it. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Uh -huh. We have such a high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. And we know that we are talking about Jesus right here. Yes, sir. Because that's what he's sitting. Go ahead and read. A minister of the sanctuary uh -huh. and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Skip down to verse 6. Skip down to verse 6. Go ahead. But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry. Uh-huh. By how much also he is in, he is the mediator of the better covenant. He is the mediator of a better covenant. What is a covenant? A covenant is a testament. Testament, covenant, same thing. Under the Old Testament they say covenant. Under the New Testament they say covenant and testament. Which is the same thing. So read that one more time, my brother. Yes, sir. But now have he obtained a more excellent ministry. Uh-huh. By how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. He is the mediator of a better covenant. Go ahead and read. Which was established upon better promises. Which was established upon better promises. Jesus gave you a better covenant. He gave you a better covenant, and the promise, the better promises came with that covenant. With his covenant came eternal life. Under the old covenant, you couldn't get eternal life. Make a plan. So now, if he gave you a better covenant and better promises. Go ahead and read. For if that first covenant had been faultless, uh -huh. then should he no place have been sought for the second. See, if, it, if there was something, if nothing was wrong with the first covenant, he wouldn't have given you the second covenant. Because God, you, you don't do nothing wrong, but men do. Men are the ones who broke that first covenant. Yes, sir. So Jesus had to come down here and die for this man because he gave them the goats and stuff to kill, but then they just killed him and that was it. They went on back to Senate. Thank you, Jesus. Now Jesus come, and now you break the covenant. Now you're going to die that, that, first, that, that, excuse me, that second death, which is the lake of fire. You're going to get a more sore punishment. 
Because you were stoned under Moses' covenant. If you broke the covenant, you were stoned to death. But under Jesus' covenant, you're going to get a more sore punishment. And what is that? It is the lake of fire. Does everybody understand? Now, we was under the old covenant. Then, okay, you know, you get stoned to death. But then, when the Lord comes, He's going to wake you up. But you're going to get the lake of fire still. But at least you get stoned to death and then you out of it. That's it. But when the Lord puts out his punishment on you, it's going to be the lake of fire. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, you can't be running around uh, uh, playing around with the commandments and the laws just because you're in the New Testament talking about you ain't got to keep it. So I'm going to tell you like we always say, man, you better stop playing. You better stop playing. Go ahead and read. What verse you at? Verse 8. Uh-huh. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord, uh -huh. when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Uh-huh. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. I will make a new covenant with the house of the Gentiles. No, sir. Did he say that? Not that we got nothing against the Gentiles, but the Lord making a covenant with Israel. <laughs> Not with the Gentiles. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Verse 9. Uh-huh. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. Because they continued not in my covenant. Go ahead. And I regarded them not, saith the Lord. See, they would continue in his covenant. So he had to come here to say, you know what, let me go down here and die for this man. Because if you don't if you don't keep my covenant now, you're gonna get that sore punishment. Let me go down here and shed my blood for this man. Go ahead and read. Verse 10. Uh-huh. Well, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel in uh -huh. those days go ahead. of the Lord. Yeah. I will put my laws into their mind. I will put my laws where? Into their mind. Does that sound like you're doing away with them? No, sir. And we're in Hebrews. This is under the New Covenant. Teach. We under the New Testament now. He said, I will put my law in their minds. Uh-huh. And write them in their hearts. Go ahead. And I will be to them a God. Uh-huh. And they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. Uh huh. For all shall know me, from the least to the greatest. Uh huh. For I will be merciful unto their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Uh huh. And that he saith, a new covenant he hath made the first old. Uh huh. Now that which decayeth. And wax of old is ready to vanish now, away. Now, what is he talking about? He is talking about the old covenant. It is ready to decay and vanish away. That is the covenant that Moses gave you. Yes, sir. Where you had to go and sacrifice the animals and everything. Where you couldn't get eternal life. No. That's, the one, that's what vanished away. The old covenant. Let's go now. Let's go to... But you see where they put the long... Well, you see where he put the law in your heart and in your mind. Now, he's not writing them on the stones no more. He put them on your heart and on your mind. And he told the Corinthians the same thing. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. 2 Corinthians, the third chapter. And we're going to pick it up in verse 3. 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. Notice where we are. We're we, we, we going to stay... In the New Testament. <laughs> we're going to stay in the New Testament. I mean, we're going to read some of the Lord's Gospels and everything. we got to do that. You understand? But we're going to be mainly in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 3 and 3. Go ahead and read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Uh -huh. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ, uh -huh. ministered by us, Written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God. Uh-huh. Not in tables of stone. Not in tables of stone, uh-huh. But in fleshy tables of the heart. He said, this is, this, we're writing this on the table, the fleshy tables of your heart, of your mind. 
This is where this has been written at, on your mind. Just like he gave you the commandments, the laws and everything, he writes them on your mind and on your heart. Go ahead and read. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And such trust have we through Christ to God word. And such trust have we through God through Christ to God word. Uh -huh. Not that we are su su sufficient of ourselves to think anything of our See, we not, you know, we don't think nothing of ourselves. We're not sufficient of ourselves. We have to believe, keep the commandments and believe on Jesus. We're not sufficient of ourselves. And a lot of things, even in our daily life, let's just look at it plain and simple. Like Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. Amen. Amen. Let's just keep it simple. Without me, you can do nothing. We are not sufficient of ourselves. Go ahead and read. But our sufficiency is of God. Uh-huh. Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament. See, he had made them able ministers of the New Testament. But did he do away with those things that are like the law in the uh, Old Testament? If God, you know, I was just telling a brother just yesterday, man, look, how does that sound that God done away with his laws? Every nation that you go to, you can even go into the Amazon, into the Everglades, where you got people running around with, uh, 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 um, uh, I ain't gonna say diapers, but y'all know what I'm trying to say. Running around pars partially naked, still killing people, ki killing uh, animals for hunting for food. They got laws. Every nation on the planet has laws. Do you think the God of the universe don't have laws? Teach. How, how much sense does that make? Uh. Don't make no sense at all. I mean, you can go and do whatever you want to and not be guilty before God. But you can't even do that with men. How do you think you can do that with God? Go ahead and read. What verse you at? Back at 6. Uh-huh. Who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament. Uh-huh. Not of the latter, but of spirit. Uh-huh. For the latter killeth. Uh-huh. But the spirit giveth life. The latter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. Now, you know, you know, people try to use this to say that, look, y'all under that Old Testament. Y'all in that Old Testament. So uh, he said, the, uh, uh, the Spirit killeth, but I'm uh, sorry, who have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, meaning the Old Testament, they said, but of the Spirit. Now that's supposed to be the New Testament. The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The Old Testament letter, that killeth, but the Spirit, which is the New Testament, that giveth life. That's right. This is what they're trying to say. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. I'm sorry, skip down to verse 17. Let's see what that spirit is real quick. Let's skip down to verse 17. Go ahead and read it. Now the Lord is that spirit. Now the Lord is that spirit. Uh-huh. And where the spirit of the Lord is, uh -huh. there is liberty. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now we're going to find out what this spirit is that you got to walk in that's going to give you liberty. But let's back up in the same chapter, though. Let's back up. I just want to show you what that spirit was. Back up to verse 7 now. Back up to verse 7. We're going to get to that spirit a little later. Go ahead and read it. Verse 7. Uh-huh. But if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stones, was glorious. Now, what was written and engraven in stones? Ten. The Ten Commandments were. Right? But he said, but if the ministration of death, written and engraven in stone, were glorious, go ahead and read. So that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for uh -huh. the glory of the continent. Go ahead. For the glory of his continent, which glory was to be done away. Which glory was to be done? Which glory was to be done away? That was the co Moses covenant. It is the one, that covenant is the one that decayeth and vanish away, vanishes away. Go ahead and read. How shall not the ministration of, of the Spirit be rather glorious? Now what, what, what spirit are we talking about? Christ is that spirit, right? So now we're talking about his ministration. He said, how shall not the spirit of, of how shall not the ministration of spirit be rather glorious? So now we're talking about Jesus being that spirit and his 
ministration. Is anybody following along so far? Because that old covenant, that's decaying. That's vanishing them. That vanished away. Verse 9, what does that say? For if the ministration of condemnation uh -huh. glory, uh -huh. much more doth the ministration of righteousness seed in glory. Oh, the ministration of righteousness, it exceedeth in glory? What is the ministration of righteousness? Christ's administration. Yes, and what is righteousness? How do you get how do you walk in righteousness? Oh. Keeping the law. We just read that, didn't we? For if the ministration of condemnation be glory, much more does the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory. So what administration are we dealing with right here? We are dealing with Christ's administration. It exceeds in glory. Go ahead and read that first covenant. Go ahead and read. For even that which was made glorious uh -huh. had no glory in this respect. See, that first covenant had no glory in this respect. You understand? It doesn't, it doesn't even compare to the first covenant. Don't compare to this covenant that we are under now. Why? Because this covenant that we are under now can get you salvation, eternal life. That first covenant could not get you eternal life. Hallelujah. So this covenant right here, if this ministration right here, exceeded in glory. For even that which was made glory had no glory in this respect. Go ahead. By reason of the glory that is that excellent. That excellent. Uh huh. That excellent. Uh huh. For if that which is done away was glorious, uh huh. Much more that which remaineth is glory. That which do what? Remaineth. Remaineth is glorious. And what remaineth now? The Lord's administration. The New Testament remaineth now. But you got the same laws that you had under the Old Covenant. You got the same laws under the New Covenant. We're going to show you. Verse 12, go ahead. See then that we have such hope. We use great plainness of speech. Uh-huh. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face. Go ahead. That the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end that of that the end of that which is abolished. What was abolished? The old covenant was abolished. Not the laws, but the old covenant, like the animal sacrifice. That was abolished. That that came with the uh with the old covenant. Does everybody understand? You couldn't get eternal life under the old covenant. So he gave you this new covenant, but you had to keep the same laws. Yes, sir. You got to keep the same laws. Let's go to Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. I'm telling you, man, the Lord really laid this thing out for his servants. And he laid this thing out for us to understand and do this. That we might get the ultimate, and that is eternal life. That is the ultimate for this man. It is eternal life. Let's, we're in Hebrews 9 and 15. Hebrews 9 and 15. Let's read, this, read that again. Go ahead and read it. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. Uh-huh. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. And for this cause, for him coming and dying for our sins on the cross... For that cause, he is a mediator of the New Testament. Uh-huh. That by means of death. Uh-huh. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Uh-huh. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. See, the ones that was under the first covenant, they will receive eternal inheritance too. If they kept the laws and commandments of God. Just like now, if you keep the laws and commands of God, you will get into eternal inheritance. Go ahead and read. 16. Uh-huh. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Uh-huh. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Uh-huh. So really, when it was, the New Testament really don't start until you get to Acts. Uh -huh. Because Jesus died in, uh, uh, in the Gospels. 
When you get to Acts, that's when he, uh, uh, he came up out the grave and then he rose to the Father in Acts the first chapter. So the New Testament really is Acts. Because Jesus, he took on two roles in the gospel. He took on a role as a prophet and he also took on a role as an apostle. But when he died and rose from the grave, that's when the testament uh, was enforced. After he died. So actually, after he died, Acts is really the New Testament. Does everybody understand? That's when the testament really went in force. Go ahead and read. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. So as long as Jesus was living, the New Testament had not come into force yet. But after he died, that's when it came into force. Go ahead and read. 18. Uh huh. Whereupon, neither the first testament was de dedicated without blood. Uh huh. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of cows and of goats with water uh -huh. and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people. Go ahead. Say. This is the blood of the testament which God have enjoined unto you. Uh huh. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Go ahead. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Uh huh. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Without the shedding of blood is no remission, no forgiveness of sin. That's why Jesus came and died for the sins of the world, and that's how he done it. He shed in his blood. Let's go now. Now we're not going to really get off into the blood thing. But let's go to Luke the 6th chapter. Luke 6. And look at what Jesus told uh, his followers here. Luke 6. And we're going to pick it up in verse 46. Luke 6 and 46. Go ahead and read it. Luke chapter 6 verse 46. Uh huh. And why call ye me Lord? Lord, and do not the things which I say. He said, look, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Now I brought you here for a reason. So just hold on for a minute. He said, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Didn't Jesus keep the Feast of Tabernacles? What are we supposed to be doing? Keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. Didn't Jesus keep the commandments? What are we supposed to be doing? Didn't Jesus keep the feast days and the, the laws, the laws and everything? Well, that's what we're supposed to be doing. He said, Why call you me and Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Verse 47. Go ahead and read it. Whosoever come unto me and hear of my saying. What did he say? Whosoever come to me and hear of my saying. Did you hear Jesus? say anything about you keeping Christmas and Easter and Sunday? Did you hear him say anything about that? Whosoever come to me and hear my sayings. Now you say you following Christ, then you should be hearing his sayings then. Not the sayings of men, traditions of men, but his sayings. Whosoever come to me and hear my sayings, uh-huh. And do of them. And what? And do of them. And do of them. Go ahead. I will show you to whom he is alike. Uh-huh. Whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And laid the foundation on a rock. <laughs> Excuse me, who is the rock? Christ. Christ is the rock. You built your foundation on Christ. This is what you're supposed to be building it on. Christ. Because he is the rock. Go ahead and read. And laid the foundation on that rock. Uh -huh. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vividly uh -huh. upon the house. Uh -huh. Upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. See, when you start keeping the laws and the commandments of God, you can't be shaken with all these other traditions of men. When you start keeping God's uh, dietary laws, His feast day, you can't be shaken with the traditions of men. Why? Because your house was founded on a rock. It was founded on Christ. Not on the traditions of men. 
Go ahead and read verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth uh -huh. against which the stream did beat vehemently, uh -huh. and immediately it fell. See, and immediately it fell. Why? Because it was not founded on Christ. It was founded on the traditions of men. So he said, he said but he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell. That's why a lot of times you get people, they come in, they start hearing the word of God for a couple of weeks or so, and then you don't see them no more. Why? Because their house was not built on the rock. They didn't get rooted in. I understand now what is going on. I understand now. Their house was not building on the rock. Go ahead and finish that. And the ruin of that house was great. And the ruin of that house is great. You know what the ruin is going to be? The lake of fire. See, Jesus just given us this parable to show us what's, what's going, what, what, what happens to a person when they build their house upon him. And what happens to a person when they don't build their house upon him? And then what's going to be their ultimate uh, uh, end? And that is the lake of fire. Let's go now. Let's go to John the 14th chapter. John 14. Because look at what Jesus said right here. And this passed by people just like a supersonic jet. As though Jesus did not say this. John 14 and verse 15. John 14 and 15. Go ahead and read it. John chapter 14, verse 15. Uh-huh. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. This is Jesus saying this. He said my commandments. But well, where did he get them? He got them from the Father. If you love me, keep my Father and I are one. This is what Jesus was telling us. My Father and I are one. So he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Go, and what is he going to do? And I will pray the Father. Uh -huh. And he shall give you another comforter. Go ahead. That he may abide with you forever. So now, if you don't keep his commandments, he going to pray to the Father for you? Why would he? You will be disobedient to me, and now I'm going to pray for you? That's why I tell people, you know, that, you know, I know they eat pork. You know, I'm a Baptist born and I'm a die Baptist. Okay. Would you pray for me? Uh-uh. No, I'm not praying for you. I'm not praying for you. Because you're telling me that you are going to willingly break God's laws and commandments. Willingly. And you're telling me this is how you're going to die? What do I pray for you for? Teach. <laughs> you're telling me this is what you going to do what am I going to pray for you for what verse you stop at 17 alright so he says I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever let's go now let's go to 1 John 2 and we're going to pick it up in verse 1 1 John 2 and 1 this is a Roman Christian's nightmare right here <laughs> This scripture right here. This is a nightmare for them. 1 John 2. 1 John 2. And we're going to pick it up in verse 1. We're going to read that verse 1. Then we're going to go to another scripture and come right back. 1 John 2 and 1. But this is a, a Roman Christian. This is a nightmare scripture for him. 1 John 2 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Yes, sir. 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. My little children, these things write I unto you. Uh-huh. That ye sin not. Now what is sin? We always ask this, and we get the same answer every time. What is sin? Transgression, Transgression of the law. Now he said that if any man sin. Now why are we talking about sin over here in almost the last book in the Bible? We're talking about, we're under the new covenant now. My little children, these things write unto you that ye sin not. Go ahead and read. And if any man sin, uh -huh. we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Jesus Christ, 
the righteous. But we're going we're gonna to come right back here. We're going to go to uh, Romans, the fifth chapter real quick. And we're going to come right back here. Because he said, and if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We're coming right back here. Hold your hand there. Uh, we're going to uh, Romans 5 and 12. Romans 5 and 12. Notice, we're in the New Testament. We're mainly in the New Testament. We're talking about sin. We're talking about the law. <laughs> Romans 5, and we're going to pick up the verse 12. Go ahead and read it. Wherefore, as by one man sin enter into the world, uh -huh. and death by sin. And so death pass upon all men, uh -huh. but all have sinned. Does everybody understand that right there? All have sinned. Go ahead and read. 13. Uh-huh. For until the law of sin was in the world. Uh-huh. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Ooh. We can stop right here. We don't have to go no farther. Because we this is we in the New Testament, Paul talking to the Romans. He said, But sin is not imputed when there is no law. So you can't even sin if you don't have a law. You can't sin. And then you ask the person, can you see it? Yeah, I can see it. Well, how can you see it? Well, how do you know what sin is if you don't have a law? How do you know that? Does everybody, you see how simple this is? You don't even know. Paul even told him. Let's read it. Uh, uh, you finish that verse 13? Mm -hmm. Let's go now. Let's read it. Romans 7 and 13. Romans 7 and 13. Go ahead and read it. Romans chapter 7, verse 13. Uh-huh. Was then that which is good made death unto me? Uh-huh. God forbid, but sin, that it might... I'm sorry. Romans 7 and 7. Romans 7 and 7. Go ahead and read. What shall we say then? Uh-huh. Is the law sin? God forbid. Uh-huh. Nay, I have not known sin, but by the law. Ooh. Now what you gonna do with that? <laughs> he said, I don't even know what sin is but by the law. I didn't even know what sin was. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I have not known sin but by the law. Go ahead and read. I ain't going to give you a law. Go ahead and read. For well, I have not known lust except the law had said, uh -huh. I shall not covet. He said, I, have, I didn't even know what lust was, except the law has said thou shalt not covet. Now you know we got some brothers keep saying that the commandments are not the law. Well where do you find thou shalt not covet at? The Ten Commandments. This is the Tenth Commandment by the way. He said I have not known sin except the law has said thou shalt not covet. So now we're looking at the law in the New Testament. Is anybody following along so far? Yes. Is this simple or what? Yes. This is simple. Let's go now. Let's go to let's go back to 1 John. Back to 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John, the second chapter. 1 John 2, and we're going to pick it up in verse 2. 1 John 2 and 2. Go ahead and read. 1 John chapter 2, verse 2. And he is a propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but, uh -huh. but also for the sins of the whole world. For the sins of the whole world. This encompasses everybody. See, he's the God of the, the world. Does everybody understand that? Oh, yeah. It's not just for Israel, it's for everybody. Go ahead and read. And hereby we do know that we know him uh -huh. if we keep his commandments. Uh -huh. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments uh -huh. is a liar and the truth is not in him. Ooh. That's plain there, ain't it? He said, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith I know of him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So if you're walking around talking about, I know the Lord. You keep your commandments? Well, no, we don't have to keep no commandments. He died. He done away with them when he died on the cross. 
And I know that you're a liar and the truth is not in you. Now that's what John says, so you can't get mad at me. I'm just repeating it. He that says, I know of him and keep it not his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. This is a Roman Christian. This scripture right here is a nightmare for him. He cannot recover after you give him this scripture. He can't recover from this. Verse 5, go ahead. But whosoever keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Uh-huh. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that said he abideth in him all himself also to walk, even as he walked. Ah. Did Jesus keep Sunday? No, sir. <laughs> what about Christmas? No, sir. He didn't even celebrate. You don't even see Jesus celebrating his birthday in the Bible. Yet men keep Christmas saying they celebrate his birthday. Did Jesus tell you that you was born to heaven? Uh-uh. He didn't tell you that. See, you got to beware of these traditions of men. Because the traditions of men would have you to believe that you don't have to keep the law according to the New Testament. They would have you believe that. And then the first place they go is where? Paul's right. They go to Paul's writing. So we're going we're gonna to read some more of Paul's writing today and show you that Paul was not telling you that you did not have to keep the law of God. He was not telling you that. And if, he, if, you, if you think for a minute or you dream that Paul said that, you better wake up and apologize. Because Paul don't have no authority to do away with no covenants. He don't have no authority to do away with no laws or none of that that God has set up. All he can do is follow them and keep them. That's all he can do with that and teach them. He could not do away with them. We have, let's go now. Let's go to uh, let's go to Psalm 111. Psalm 111. Because he gave you his commandments forever. Now, if God gave you something forever, how could a man do away with them? If he gave you something forever. Psalm 111. Psalm 111. We're going to pick up the verse 9. Psalm 111 and 9. Everybody got it? Yeah. Go ahead and read it. Psalms chapter 111, verse 9. He sent redemption unto his people. Uh-huh. He have commanded his covenant forever. He have commanded his covenant for how long? Forever. Forever. Now how can you, as a man, or any man, do away with God's covenant? And we're talking about none other than the Ten Commandments. He sent redemption unto his people. This is how he was saved. And this is, what, this is how you were saying When you came under the blood of Jesus and did what? Start walking in those laws and those commandments. Under the old covenant, what did they have to do? They had to sacrifice those animals and then do what? Walk under the laws and commandments of God. Teach. That's what they had to do. They couldn't do away with them. They couldn't do away with those covenants. He's sitting there. If the prophets couldn't do away with them, how can the apostle? Do away with him. How can he do away with him? He said, he sent redemption unto his people. He have commanded his covenant forever. Uh-huh. Holy and reverend is his name. Holy and reverend is his name. Not your pastor. Your pastor ain't no reverend. That's not his name. So you might want to rethink that when you start talking about reverend XYZ. Because he is not reverend. Holy and reverend is the Lord's name. Verse 10, go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now he's going to tell you what covenant he's talking about. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh -huh. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Because this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. This is those laws and those commandments. Go ahead and finish that. His praise endureth forever. Now, let's go now. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter. Because, you know, one day, the Lord is going to judge you. I don't care who you are. You understand? Whether you come up in the first resurrection or the second resurrection, you still got to be judged. Does everybody understand that? 
You still got to be just. God got to look at you and say, well, you know, he did this in his lifetime. He did that in his lifetime. All right, I'm going to let him come up in the first resurrection. That is a judgment. Or oh, he did this in his lifetime. He did that in his lifetime. I'm going to let him stay in the grave for another thousand years. Then I'll decide. But then he'll decide whether you're going to go into the kingdom or whether you're going to go into the fire. Let's go now. We have uh, 1 Peter 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Peter 4 and 1. 1 Peter 4 and 1. Go ahead and read it. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1. Uh-huh. For as much then as Christ hath suffered us in the flesh, are yourselves likewise with the same mind. Uh-huh. For he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. Now, because you're going to suffer. As a servant of God, you're going to suffer. You're not going to suffer like Christ did right now because, you know, it's going. but it is going to come one day, though. It's, it's going to come one day that you might have to die for the Word of God. Are you walking in righteousness? Because you never know when that day is going to come that you might have to suffer like Christ. So for instance, they're going to come to you and say, well, look, man, don't start, te don't teach them laws and commandments no more. I'm no more uno. You will, I am Pontificus Maximus. You're going to have to follow after me. Well, no, I'm following after Christ and I'm keeping his laws and commandments. Okay, well, then we're going to chop your head off. Well, then you're going to have to do what you got to do. You're going to have to do what you got to do. You either take this mark or we're going to chop your head off. Well, I know one thing. If I get that mark, I'm going straight to the lake of fire. But if I don't get that mark, I got a chance. But, and I know another thing, that I have to be walking in the laws and commandments of God in order to get into the kingdom. Make it plain. Hallelujah. I know that I got to do this. Mm -hmm. Read that verse again. Verse 1. Uh -huh. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us uh -huh. in the flesh, are yourself likewise with the same mind. Arm yourself likewise with the same mind. You're going to have to suffer one day. You live long enough and not a lot of us are suffering now. Teach. With our family members. You know, I don't think none of us are uh, uh, suffering unto blood yet. But I know that you have suffered with your family members and your friends. Notice how they ain't calling you no more. You understand? How, you know, when you come around, they walking away. That would hurt a servant of God that my people, you know, they don't uh, 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 want to be around me no more because of the word of God. Yeah, that'll hurt me for, it hurt me for a little while. But then after a while, I say, you know what? God come before all of y'all, even myself. Even myself. So you know what? If that's what it, that's what happened. It is what it is. Yes, sir. If I got to give my family and friends up for the uh, word of God, then that's what I got to do. Because my friends and my family members are not going to get me salvation. I got to do that. I got to do that through keeping the laws and commandments of God. I got to do it. Go ahead and read it. Verse 2. Verse 2. So you got to, I'm sorry, but you got to, so you got to arm yourself. You got to be ready for this. Because the first thing you start telling people about to keep the law, everything else sounds beautiful. Start telling about the laws and commandments of God and see don't they start walking away from you. Sean in you. Here he come, man. That's all he want to talk about, them laws and commandments. God done away with them laws and commandments. Verse 2. Go ahead and read it. Verse 2. Uh-huh. That he no longer shall live the rest of his time in the flesh uh -huh. to the lust of men, uh -huh. but to the will of God. See, don't live the rest of your life to the lust of men. But you live the rest of your life to the will of God. And the will of God is that you keep his laws and commandments and his statutes. That is his will. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice to have wrought the will of the Gentile. Uh-huh. When we walked in 
lasciviousness. Uh huh. See, that's sin right there. Lascivious. Access of sin. Go ahead and read. Lust. Uh -huh. Excess of wine. Uh huh. Revelings. Banqueting. Uh huh. And abominable idolatries. Abominable idolatries. Now, what are abominable idolatries? What is what what is walking in idolatry? That's serving other gods. Isn't that the first commandment? Yeah. Don't have no other god before me. Yeah. Now, why is Peter telling you this? If you don't have to keep no keep the law no more. For the time, for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we were walk, when we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, drunkenness. So you know, if you're drunk, you ain't gonna get into the kingdom. Excessive wine, revelings, banquetings, uh, 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 abominable idolatries. These, these are sins right here. This is breaking the law. So if you, if, this, if the law was done away with, why is he telling you you used to walk this way? We used to walk this way. Go ahead, verse four. Wherein they think it's strange that ye run not with them to the same access of riot. See, they think it's strange when you don't do these things no more. Mm -hmm. You understand, when you start talking about I'm, I'm keeping the feast of God and you know, and I'm walking in the laws and commandments, they think it's strange now. Sure enough. What's wrong with, what's wrong with uh, Brother Caleb? Hmm. He didn't used to be like that. Right. See, you was cool when you was running around in the streets with everybody. Right. You understand, doing your thing. But when you start walking in the laws, commandments of God, people think it's strange. Read that one more time. Yes, sir. Four. Wherein they think it's strange that ye run not with them to the same access uh -huh. of the riot. Uh huh. Speaking evil of you. Speaking evil of you. They act like when you start walking in the laws and commandments of God, you doing something evil. <laughs> you doing wrong. And the only thing you're trying to do is serve your God in righteousness. It is hard uh, a lot of times serving God in righteousness in this generation that we in. All the things that's going on around us. And we still got to keep the laws and commandments of God. And then people act like when you're doing that, you're doing something wrong. That's how upside down the world has become. Right Wrong is right now. Go ahead and read. Verse 5. Uh-huh. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge oh. the quick and the dead. Who gonna, this is everybody. Every man is going to give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead. One day you're going to have to give an account for the things that you have done in this life. You're going to have to give an account for it. Did you keep God's laws and commandments or will you keep the traditions of men? Because one day you're going to have to give an account for this, for your life. Go ahead, verse 6. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead. Uh-huh. That they might be judged according to men in the flesh. Uh-huh. But live according to God in the spirit. But live according to God in the spirit. Because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to walk in his spirit. Let's go to James, the second chapter. James 2. James, the second chapter. Back right up to James, the second chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Because you, every man going to be judged. And you're going to give account for the works that you have done in this lifetime. James 2. And we're going to pick it up in verse 8. James 2 and 8. Go ahead and read it. James chapter 2, verse 8. Uh-huh. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. According to what? The scripture. Where are the scriptures at? From Genesis to Malachi. Yes. The Old Testament. Yes. If you fulfill the royal Why is he asking you if you fulfill? Why is he telling you this? If the law is done away. It is no good in the New Testament. If you fulfill the royal law. A uh, law according to the scriptures, uh-huh. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's in He do well. That's in Leviticus in 19th chapter, I believe. He said, uh, uh, you, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. That is the law. Go ahead and read. 
But if you have respect to persons, uh -huh. you commit sin. You commit what? Sin. Well, what is sin? Transgression of the law. We read the law out of the New Testament. Does everybody understand this? So no more of that, you know, well, the law was done away in Christ. Yeah, the sacrificial law was done away in Christ, but not the royal law. Not the Ten Commandments. Not the dietary law. Not the Lord's feast days. Go ahead and read. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It says, but if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin. Uh-huh. And are convinced of the law as transgressor. And you are convinced of the law as a transgressor. Now, why is he telling you that you are a uh, transgressor of the law if you are a respected person? Why is he telling you this? Verse 10, go ahead. For whosoever shall keep the whole law uh -huh. and yet offend in one point, uh -huh. he is guilty of all. Uh, see, you know, people try to see you can't keep the law because you offend in one point, then uh, if you have offended, you are guilty of all. Well, you know what? You still got to keep the law. Why is he telling you that you, uh, if you uh, offend in one point, then you are guilty of all? Why is he telling you this if you don't have to keep it? Make that plain, brother. You can't use this scripture and say you don't have to keep the law because you offend at one point. And then he said you offend at all, you are guilty of all. That don't mean, no, I don't have to keep it. That means you have to keep it so that you don't offend at all or be guilty of all. Come on. Does everybody, does this make sense? Verse 11, go ahead. For he that said, do not commit adultery, uh -huh. said also, do not kill. No, why, if they tell you that, if they, if they, if they tell you in the New Testament you don't have to keep the law no more, why is he telling you about committing adultery? He said, also, do not kill. Where is that at? This is a law. Yes, sir. Now, you know, is he schizophrenic or something? He's telling you on one hand you don't have to, but on the other hand, if you do, you are guilty. How, how does that make sense? Read that one more time, brother. Yes, sir. 11. Uh-huh. For he that said, do not commit adultery, uh -huh. said also, do not kill. Uh-huh. Now, if thou commit no adultery, Yet if thou kill, uh -huh. thou will become a transgressor of the law. Either way, if you break either one of these laws, you will become a transgressor of the law. Whether you kill or whether you commit adultery, you are a transgressor of the law. But if you don't have to keep it, then why is he telling you right here, you are a transgressor of the law? Teach. Why is he telling you this? In the New Testament. New Testament. So speak ye. And so do, uh -huh. as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Ooh, you see what you're going to be judged by? The law of liberty. But just in case you didn't get that, we're going to break it down for you a little bit more. Because you're going to be judged by the law, whether you walking in the law or whether you saying, I ain't got to keep the law, you're still going to be judged by it. Let's go to Romans, the second chapter. Romans 2. You ain't, ain't got to keep it, you're still going to be judged by it. <laughs> Romans 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse uh, uh, 11. We're going to break it down a little bit more for you. Romans 2 and verse 11. Everybody got it? Yeah. Go ahead and read it. Romans chapter 2, verse 11. Uh-huh. But there is no respect of persons with God. See, God no respect of persons. He don't care what nationality you wear or he don't care whether you're rich or whether you're poor. He don't care about none of those things. You're a male or you're a female. You're an Israelite. <laughs> Go ahead and read. For as many as I say, well, back up to verse 10. Back up to verse 10. Go ahead and read that. 10. Uh-huh. But glory, honor, and peace. To every man that work of good. Uh -huh. To the Jew first uh -huh. and also to the Gentiles. So, so we don't get that mixed up. To the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Go ahead and read. Well, there is no respect of persons with God. Uh -huh. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And you, you, you're still going to be judged by the law. When you're saying that I don't have to keep the law, you're going to perish without law. 
That's what you're going to be judged by, though. God can't say, well, God is not going to say, well, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to throw you in the fire and you ain't did nothing. You haven't broken no law. His laws and his commandments, why would he throw you in the fire? You turn up, but you talk about, okay, I ain't got to keep no laws and commandments. Okay, well, that's what you're going to perish by. You're going to perish by it. Go ahead and read. And as many as have sinned in the law uh -huh. shall be judged by the law. You're going to be judged. If you sinning in the law, you walk around saying, yo, I keep God's law, but you sinning, willfully sinning in the law, you still going to be judged by it. You are still going to be judged by it. Now he's just going to tell you plainly. Verse 13. Go ahead. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. Uh huh. But the doers of the law shall be justified. We can close the book now. We can close the book and go home. He said, look, for not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. The doers of the law. Does this sound like Paul done away with the law? Uh-uh. This don't sound like Paul. So you need to find somebody else. Because Paul ain't the one. When you really start reading his writings, you'll see Paul ain't the one. No, sir. <laughs> he is not, you need to pick somebody else to try to do away with the law. Because he is not the one. Not the hearers of the law, uh, for, for, for not the hearers of the law are uh, just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. Does everybody understand that? The doers of the law. They're the ones that's going to be just before God. So you walk around talking about you ain't got to keep the law all you want to. Let's go to Romans 8 chapter. Romans 8. Romans 8. And we're going to figure that Paul, he said a mouthful there. Romans 8 and 1. I mean, how can you get around that scripture there? How can you get around that one? You got to be deaf and blind in both ears. And blind in both eyes. To, get, to try to get around, to not see that one. Verse 8, uh, chapter, Romans 8 and 1. Go ahead and read it. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Uh-huh. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, uh -huh. who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Because this is what God wants us to walk in, the Spirit. And we know that the law is spiritual. Back up to the seventh chapter, you'll see. For we know that the law is spiritual. Verse 14. Uh, Romans 7 and 14. We ain't going to read it. But if you back up to Romans 4, I mean Romans 7 and 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. So what do you say? There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And that is walking in the law. Go ahead and read. Verse 2. Uh-huh. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus uh -huh. have made me free from the law of sin and death. What is the law of sin and death? Breaking those commandments. You break the commandments, that is a, that is the law of sin and death. Go ahead and read. But what the law could not do, and uh -huh. that it was weak through the flesh, uh -huh. God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, Go ahead. and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, uh -huh. that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Now, what, <laughs> you see what he said right here? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Because this is what God wants us to do. Walk in His Spirit. Walk in righteousness. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Go ahead and read. Who walk not after the flesh, uh -huh. but after the Spirit. For we know that the law is spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. And that's what He wants us to do. Walk in the right, walk in righteousness. That the law might be fulfilled in us. Man, that, I mean, you know, this is so plain. Mm -hmm. This is so plain. The law in the New Testament. The law in the New Testament. Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter. Philippians 3. 
Philippians 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Philippians 3 and 3. After this, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be telling nobody that you don't have to keep the law. I'm a New Testament Christian. Once you hear this, how could you? Philippians 3 and 3. Philippians 3 and 3. Go ahead and read it. Philippians chapter 3, verse 3. Uh-huh. But we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit, uh -huh. and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. See, now if you walk in, in the flesh, you walk in calmly minded. That means you're walking in sin. Come on. But if you're walking in the Spirit, you're walking in the law, which is walking in righteousness. Hallelujah. You see what he said, though? For we are the circumcision that worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. What did Christ Jesus tell us? If you love me, keep my commandments. That is walking in the Spirit. And that is walking in the law. Skip to verse 5. Go ahead. Read. It's, uh, circumcised the eighth day uh -huh. of the stock of Israel. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Uh-huh. And Hebrew of Hebrew. Now somebody said Paul was a Jew. But right here, he did call himself a Jew of Tarsus. But his actual pedigree was what? A Benjamite. Go ahead and read. And Hebrew of Hebrew. Uh-huh. As touching the law. Uh-huh. A Pharisee. He didn't say as touching the uh, uh, t uh, I'm a Pharisee and I was touching the law or was keeping the law. He said as touching the law, a Pharisee and the Pharisees kept the law. Go ahead and read. Concerning zeal. Uh-huh. Persecuting the church. Touching righteousness which is in the law. Blameless. Ooh, so say, read that again. Concerning zeal, uh -huh. persecuting the church, uh -huh. touching the righteousness, uh -huh. which is in the law, uh -huh. blameless. Ooh. Touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. He said, I'm blameless. I've been walking in the law. <laughs> I'm a Hebrew of Hebrew, the touch of the law, Pharisee. Then he said, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. We're looking at the law, the keeping of the law in the New Testament. That's right, brother. Let's go now. Let's go to Acts, the 18th chapter. Acts 18. And we're just going to throw this in here, like my pastor used to say, for a little flavor. Acts 18. Acts 18, because we saw Jesus earlier kept the Feast of Tabernacles. Then we read, let, let no man judge you in meat and drink or in respect of a holy day, a holy day, in honoring a holy day. Don't let no man uh, 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 dishonor you in keeping this. We had Acts 18 and 18. Acts 18 and 18. Go ahead and read it. Acts chapter 18, verse 18. And Paul, after his, after this, tarried there yet a good while. Uh -huh. And then took his leave of the brethren and sailed thence into Syria uh -huh. with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shorn his head in Centuria. Uh -huh. For he had a vow. For he had a vow. You know, they was telling him, Paul, these men are going to try to kill you. So you know what? Go and shave your head and show him that you walk as orderly and keep as the law. So now after that, now he called Paul now. Go ahead and read. He came to Ephesus uh -huh. and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. He has left the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. Uh huh. When they desired him to tarry longer time with them, uh -huh. he consented not. Uh huh. But bade them farewell, saying, I must by all men means keep this feast. I must by all means keep this feast. Now why is he saying he, saying he must by all means do it if he have done away with it? Why is he telling you this? Because you know people want to go to Paul's way when they want to do away with God's law. So now, if he done away with Paul, done away with the feast day, why is he saying, I must by all means keep this feast? 
That don't sound like he done away with these days to me, does it? Does it sound like that to you? I must buy all and say, look, I, I got to go to Jerusalem to keep this feast by all means. Go ahead and read. I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. Uh-huh. But I will return again unto you, if God will. And he sailed from Ephesus. Ephesus. Now, so in this same chapter, we're going to back up. In this same chapter, look what else Paul was keeping. We're going to back up in this same chapter to verse 1. <coughs> verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read it. <coughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 1. No, Acts 18 and verse 1. We, we go in the, we're in the same chapter, Acts 18 and verse 1. Look at what else Paul kept. After these things, Paul departed from Athens uh -huh. and came to Corinth. Now, he departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Skip down to verse uh, 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 4. Skip down to verse 4. What does it say? And he reasoned in the synagogues every Sabbath. Uh-huh. And persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. He, he went into the synagogue. He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath. And persuaded the Jews and the Greeks. Now, what are you going to do with this? You know, our beloved Paul, everybody's beloved Paul, he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, persuading the Jews and the Greeks. What are you going to do with this? So Paul and Jesus, Jesus kept the feast days. The disciples or the apostles kept the feast days. Go to Acts the second chapter. They kept the uh, uh, Sabbath day right here. He reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath, persuading the Jews and the Greeks. What are you going to do with this? Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 6th chapter. We're just looking at some of the laws that were kept in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 11. Go ahead and read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Uh huh. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you. Our heart is enlarged. Uh-huh. Ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in our own bowels. Uh-huh. In your own bowels, excuse me. Now for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children. Uh-huh. Be ye also enlarged. He said, I'm speaking to you all as though you are my children. Verse 14, go ahead. Be ye not unequally yoked together with the unbelievers. See, he said don't be unequally yoked with the unbelievers. You're not supposed to be walking around with people that don't really keep God's laws and commandments. Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. See, that's how a lot of times we go uh, south, you understand, and we get back out there in the world because we're hanging out with unbelievers. Come on. We should be hanging with each other. We should be hanging with believers, not unbelievers. Because the birds of a feather are going to flock together. Amen. You keep going to the barbershop with your friend, you're going to get a haircut. Amen. You keep going, you're going to get a haircut. So therefore, we should not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Go ahead and read it. For what fellowship have righteousness with the unrighteous? See, you know, what, what a righteousness? Righteousness is walking in the law. What is unrighteousness? Unrighteousness is walking in sin, willful sin. He said, you know, uh, 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 what do you say? Uh, uh, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? What fellowship do you have with a person that walking in unrighteousness? None. You're not supposed to have no fellowship with them. Go ahead and read. And what communion have light with darkness? And what communion have light with darkness? Even when you look at uh, 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 the, the AA and NA, what do they tell you? They tell you, uh, look, don't be hanging out with people that are still using drugs and alcohol. They even got a tradition for that. Don't be hanging out with people that are doing drugs and alcohol. Because if you keep going to the barbershop, you're going to get a haircut. 
Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Verse 15, uh, skip down to verse 16. Go ahead and read it. 16. Uh -huh. And what agreement have the temple of God with idols? Now wait a minute. Idols? What's that doing right there? The Lord told you in the Old Testament, in the law, don't worship idols. Don't worship other gods. But right here in 2 Corinthians, and then Paul telling this to the Corinthians, to the Gentiles, at that. So you know Israel couldn't be uh, 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 dealing with uh, idols. He telling this to the Gentiles. And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? Uh-huh. For ye are the temple of the living God. Ye are the temple of the living God. The word of God dwells to be dwelling in you. And when the word, word of God dwells in you, you are the temple of God. Go ahead and read. As God has said, uh -huh. I will dwell in them and uh -huh. walk in them. Go ahead. And I will be their God. And they shall be my people. And when God is in you and walk in you, his word is in you. That's how he's in you. And all thy words acknowledge me, and I will direct thy path. How does God direct your path? Your path? Through his laws, his commandments, and his statutes. That's how he directs your path. Go ahead. What verse you at? 17. Uh-huh. Wherefore? Come out from among them, uh -huh. and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Go ahead. And touch not the unclean thing. Now, wait a minute now. He said, wherefore, come out from among them, saith the Lord, and separate yourself from them, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. What is this unclean thing? Now, you know, you can read all through the New Testament. You ain't going to find out what this unclean thing is, but yet it's in the New Testament. So now, how do you find out what the unclean thing is? You got to go back to the law. Does anybody understand? You got to go back to the law and find out what the unclean thing is. Now, I could have put that in there because, you know, the Lord told you don't walk on the grave. If you walk on the grave, then that's an unclean thing. Don't touch it. He said don't touch a dead body. If you touch a dead body, that's an unclean thing. He said, look, when you, uh, uh, if you uh, drop something that is unclean into, uh, 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 say you got a skillet, and something unclean falls into that, into that, unclean, uh, into that skillet, that is unclean. You're not supposed to touch it, or you're not supposed to eat it. If something died, if something died, an unclean beast, if it died, and you go and touch it, what are you? You unclean. We could have went into that. But he's telling you, don't touch the unclean thing. And the only way you will find out what the unclean thing is, is if you go back to the law. Go ahead and read it. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will receive you. You see, that? that we're looking at the law in the New Testament right here. <laughs> If you don't touch the unclean thing, the Lord said, then I will receive you. Let's go look at this again in Isaiah. Let's go to the law and look at this. Isaiah 52. Isaiah 52. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Isaiah 52 and 11. Isaiah 52 and 11. Go ahead and read it. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 11. Uh -huh. So I'm going to give everybody an assignment. Go find out what the unclean thing is. See if you can find it in the New Testament. You can't find it in the New Testament. That means you've got to go to the Old Testament and then come back and tell me about it. Isaiah 52 and 11. Go ahead and read it. Depart ye, depart ye. Uh -huh. Go ye out from thence. Uh -huh. Touch not unclean thing. Touch no unclean thing. Uh -huh. Touch no unclean thing. Uh -huh. Go ye out of the midst of her. Go ahead. Be ye clean and bear the vessels of the Lord. Be you clean and bear the vessels. How do you be, how are you to be clean? <laughs> you got to go back to the law to find out how you are to be clean. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Yeah. See, you can't get around keeping the law. You can break it all you want to and say, you're gonna, but you're going to be judged by it. You will be judged by it. Let's go now. Let's go to, uh, 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 let's go to 1 Timothy, the first chapter. 1 Timothy 1. 
1 Timothy 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. See, you can't get around keeping the law. You can't get around it, man. Either you're going to live by it or you're going to die by it. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. 1 Timothy 1 and 8. Go ahead and read it. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Uh-huh. But we know that the law is good. Uh-huh. If a man use it lawfully. Ooh, we can stop right there. You know, I could have gave you the one hit of quitters. But I want you to get I want you to get this down up inside of you. He said, but we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Now, why is he telling you this? If, the, if he done away with the law. If Paul done away with the law. Yes, sir. That would make him schizophrenic or something. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. See, what does a righteous man do? The righteous man walks in the law. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. The righteous man walks in the law. Go ahead and read. But for the lawless and disobedient. Oh, you see who the law is made for? For the lawless and for the disobedient. Go ahead and read. For the ungodly and for sinners. Uh-huh. For unholy and profane. Go ahead. For murderers of fathers uh -huh. and murderers of mothers. For manslayers. Uh-huh. For whoremongers. Uh-huh. For them that defile themselves with mankind. What is the opposite and the strength of sin? It is the law. It is the law. Because right here, we're looking at these sinners right here. He said, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and profane, for the murderers, father of fathers, and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers. These are willful sinners right here. Go ahead and finish that. For them that defile themselves with mankind. Uh-huh. For men stillers. Go ahead. For liars. For perjured persons. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Now look, contra uh, sound doctrine is walking in the righteousness and walking in the law. That is sound doctrine. That's right. That is sound doctrine. Let's go now. Let's go to Romans. We got two more. Romans, the first chapter. Romans 1, and we're going to pick it up in verse 28. Romans 1 and 28. When you get it, go ahead and read it. Romans chapter 1, verse 28. Uh-huh. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a right mind uh -huh. to do those things which are not convenient. Uh -huh. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Being filled with all unrighteousness. Now look at what he's going to tell you what unrighteousness is. Go ahead. Fornication. Uh-huh. Wickedness. Uh-huh. Covenantness. Maliciousness. Full of envy. Uh-huh. Murder. Debate. Deceit. Malignity, uh huh, whispers, backbiters, uh huh. All this, all this is not the commandments, right? Here. This is the law, though. Come on, <laughs> we're not reading all ten commandments. We're reading the law, though. Go ahead and read. Haters of God. Oh, uh, what? You mean people hate God? Come on. Yeah. And what are they considered? Sinners. And so, what is sin? Transgression of the law. Go ahead and read. Despiteful. Uh-huh. Proud. Boasters. Inventors. Of evil things. Uh-huh. Disobedient to parents. Disobedient to parents. Uh-huh. Without understanding. Uh-huh. Covenant breakers. Covenant breakers. What is the covenant that they are breaking? If you ain't got to keep the law and the commandments right, what covenant are they breaking in? The Ten Commandments. You said it, brother. Without understanding. See, you don't come. What is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations? It is the laws and commandments of God. He said right here, without understanding. Covenant breakers. Uh huh. First without, without natural affection. Yep, go ahead. Implicable. Uh huh. Unmerciful. 
who knowing that the judgment of God that they which commit such things uh -huh. are worthy of death. Ooh. Keep on running around talking like you ain't got to keep the law of God. Because those people that do these things, they are worthy of death. Uh huh. Not only do the same, uh huh, but have pleasure in them that do them. Oh, they really enthralled. Not only do they do these things, but they got pleasure in the people that do these things. Let's go now. That's why the book tells you that you should not be unequally, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Matthew 5 and 17. Matthew 5 and 17. Matthew 5 and 17. When you get it, go ahead and read. We got one more after this. Matthew 5 and 17. Go ahead and read it. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Think not that I have come to destroy the law. Now, if you say that you don't have to keep the law, then you said Jesus did come to destroy the law. But he said, think not that I've come to destroy the law. And you thinking that he did come to destroy the law if you say you ain't got to keep it. See how you going against what the master himself says? Go ahead and read. Think not that I've come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. Uh huh. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, that is because there is no light in them. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I come to keep the law. And we know that the Lord was without sin. So if he was without sin, that means he was keeping the law. What is the opposite of sin? The law. Go ahead and read. 18. Uh huh. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law. Uh huh. Till all be fulfilled. Did we read something like that earlier? <laughs> he said, till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Is, the, is heaven and earth still here? Then the law is still good. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Now I don't care what no man say. What the Lord said. Go ahead and read. 19. Uh-huh. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. <laughs> He's just making it plain. He said, whosoever, that means you know, Israelite, don't care if you're Israelite, Gentile, Hamite. He said, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, aha. Uh -huh. And shall teach men so. And you going around teaching men this? Go ahead and read. He shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. He ain't going to be in there. He's going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. But well, whosoever shall do and teach them, uh -huh. the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Ain't that plain? We could have just read this one scripture right here and been done. <laughs> he said the one that do and teach them, they're going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead and read it. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, uh -huh. ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. Well, didn't he tell the Pharisees that Moses gave you the law, but you don't keep it? Come on. Now he's telling them, look, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So you, you know, you just can't be here. The, the, not just the, the, the hearers of, are going to be just before God, but the doers of the law, they shall be justified. It's real. The law out of the New Testament. Isn't that something? All these years you've been told that you ain't got to keep the law no more because you are a New Testament Christian and God done away with the law when he died, when Jesus died on the cross. This is really an eye opener to death. Let's go to Hebrews the seventh chapter. This is gonna be last. Hebrews the seventh chapter, and we're gonna pick it up at verse 21. This is truly an eye opener to death. Hebrews 7 and 21. Go ahead and read it. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 21. 
For those priests were made without an oath, but this with, with an oath. Uh -huh. By him that said unto, excuse me, by him that said unto him, the Lord swear and will not repent. Uh -huh. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Talking about Jesus. He is a priest after the order of Melchizedek, verse 22. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. You see that? By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Or we could have said a better covenant. Yes. Jesus indeed gave us a better testament built upon the same laws and commandments that were given to Moses under the Old Testament yes, or the sir. Old Covenant. Yes, sir. So I thank everybody for coming out. Thank you. Now we're going to have a reading of the announcements. Grace and peace to our brothers and sisters here at the Israel Church of the Living God. If this is your first visit, we hope you come back and worship with us again next Sabbath. Excuse me. There is no eating and drinking in the sanctuary with the exception for water. Brothers and sisters, please adhere to the dress code of Israel's Church of the Living God. Brothers, please remove any head covering upon entering the building. Do not wear sleeveless shirts, please jogging pants, shorts, tight fitting pants, or any other revealing attire. Sisters, you must have a head covering, this is required, head scarf, etc. Do not wear short skirts, midriffs, or see through blouses, many dresses, many skirts, halter tops of any kind, revealing splits, tight fitting, or cleavage revealing attire, modest apparel only. We have Bibles and scarves available for visitors. If you use a Bible or scarf that belongs to Israel, Church of the Living God, please return it prior to leave. If you live in the Lake County, Illinois area, please watch our television program, The Word for Life, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., Comcast Channel 17. You can visit our Facebook page, Israel's Church of the Living God, to post questions or comments. All questions will be answered according to the Bible. You can click the Facebook like button to see Facebook like button to receive our daily post and also click the follow button to receive class information. Church activities and updates are in the news feed. In an effort to expand the church ministry, we have started a building fund. You can make your secure payments online using our PayPal account at www.israelschurchoftlg.org. Or you can send your donations to the attention of ICO. P.O. Box 8933, Waukegan, Illinois, 60079. We thank you for your past contributions and hope for your continued support. Free will donations are welcome and appreciated. Finally, brothers and sisters, please, please continue to pray for one another. This is this weekly Sabbath day announcement. If you'd like to contact us here at Israel's Church of Living God, you can give us a call at 847-636-4792. That's 847-636-4792. We also would like for you to follow us on our website. That's Israel's Church of TLG.org. Israel's Church of TLG.org. Where you can go on there and follow us on Facebook. And you can look at some of our previous recorded videos on YouTube. Uh, we would like for those that are uh, viewing our videos on YouTube so, to subscribe and like our channel. Uh, we also have set up a GoFundMe account. We would like for those who are willing hearted to uh, um, uh, make donations for our building fund. 